In this video, we're going to present the expressions for the deformation strain energy in a continuum undergoing general deformation. We know from the simple linear elastic one-dimensional case studied earlier that under the action of conservative forces, in this case it was only the mass or the weight, the kinetic energy and the potential energy defined by the strain energy minus Sorry, the kinetic energy and the strain energy, uh, or plus the, uh, uh, the strain energy, minus the work done by the external load is equal to a constant. The strain energy is well defined for a simple one-dimensional case, half kx squared. In this video, we're going to investigate the expressions for strain energy inside a continuum. What, how, what does this expression look like for a continuum? I will just start by reminding you of the syntax we used for integration over the deformed and the reference configuration. We use omega to represent the domain of the deformed configuration and use small letters dx1, dx2, dx3 or dx to represent a differential deformed configuration volume. We use omega naught to represent the domain of the reference configuration and use capital uh, letters um, dx to represent dx1, dx2, dx3, uh, capital dx1, dx2, dx3 to represent the differential reference configuration volume. The integration over both configurations are related by simple change of variables and noting that small dx is equal to j multiplied by capital dx and j being the determinant of f or the ratio of the volumes. We're going to use an integral formulation approach independent of the components and coordinate system chosen. The Eulerian form of the equilibrium equation or the dynamic equilibrium equation is equivalent to the sum of forces. So uh, this is the sum of forces equal mass multiplied by acceleration, the continuity equi the, the, the uh, uh, equilibrium, the dynamic equilibrium equation is written right here. The power of these forces can be obtained by multiplying them by the velocity or taking the dot product of these forces with the velocity. Then we perform integration over the full domain to find the total power which includes both static and dynamic terms. There are three terms that appear in this equation. The first term is shown here to be equal to the rate of change of the kinetic energy. So rho a dot v dx, this term will be shown to be equal to the rate of change of the kinetic energy. The third term is equal to the power of the external body forces vector. We are going to manipulate the middle term which bring, will bring out the strain energy rate. But before we do this, we'll go through the steps taken to identify that the first term is equal to the rate of change of the kinetic energy. And we're going to do this by simply writing the expression for the kinetic energy. The kinetic energy is defined as rho over 2 multiplied by uh, v dot v, basically uh, mv squared. But because we're taking the, uh, the kinetic energy per unit volume, it's uh, uh, rho divided by 2 v dot v. And it's, we're talking about the total kinetic energy, so we're integrating this over the volume and we're taking the time, material time derivative outside the integral. We cannot simply put the, uh, start, uh, exchange the, the integral and the derivative because the domain of the integration varies with time. And so first we replace small dx with j uh, the x fix the domain of integration to the reference configuration, then we can uh, simply uh, 
exchange, the integration, and the differentiation. So now we can uh, move the differentiation operator inside the integration operator, and we end up with half d rho j by dt v dot v plus the integral of rho a dot v integrated over uh, dx. So uh, you, that's using the um, uh, product rule for differentiation. d rho j by dt is actually equal to zero based on the mass, mass balance equation. And so this term goes and we end up with rho a dot v. And this is equal to the rate of change of the kinetic energy. And so that takes care of the first term. So now we are going to work with the middle term. I will resort back to components and the divergence theorem. The reason to resort back to components because I introduced the divergence theorem using a component form. Otherwise, uh, someone else can use a vector form of the, diverge of the divergence theorem and not have to resort to components. The component form of the middle term is uh, given by partial sigma j i by partial x j multiplied by v i. Here summation i j from equal to 1 to 3. Using the product rule we can uh, find that this expression is equal to partial sigma j i v i partial x j minus sigma j i partial v i by partial x j. This term, I can use the divergence theorem to replace the integration over the volume with integration over, over the surface and replace the partial derivatives with the expression itself and replace x j with uh, the component n j. This term is actually equal to uh, sigma j i n j is equal to the traction vector on the surface. And this expression is actually the, the dot product between the traction vector on the surface and the velocity of the surface. So this gives me the power of the external forces acting on the surface. The last term is equal to sigma j i partial b i by partial x j. This term is equal to the trace of sigma multiplied by the velocity gradient L. Substituting back into the power equation, the external power is shown to be equal to the rate of the change of the kinetic energy plus this term which is the rate of change of the strain energy. Trace sigma L can be viewed as the sum of the stresses multiplied by the instantaneous strain rates. Because of symmetry of sigma, one can replace L with its symmetric component, the stress tensor, the stretch tensor D. And the stretch tensor D can be viewed as the strain rate. In other words, if I multiply D by small time increment dt, and I know that D is the uh, uh, partial vi by partial xj plus partial vj by partial xi multiplied by half, multiplying vi by dt gives me uh, dui, and so this term is equal to the um, uh, an increment in the spatial um, strain described by half the spatial gradient of u and its transpose. Sigma and d, the Cauchy stress tensor and the uh, stress tensor are termed strain uh, energy conjugates because their trace naturally provides the strain energy per unit volume in the deformed configuration. We can replace u bar dot with w dot, which is the strain energy per unit volume of the reference configuration. We can also replace sigma with the expression in terms of the first periodic Kirchhoff stress and replace L with expressions in, uh, of f because L is equal to f dot f negative one. 
Simplifying, we end up with trace f dot p transpose, which implies that the uh, first pure Kirchhoff stress p and f dot or f are also energy conjugates. Sigma and d give me the energy in the uh, deformed configuration. P and F, they give me the energy in the undeformed uh, or the, re uh, the reference configuration. And similarly, when we replace P with an expression of S, and after some manipulations, we can find that the uh, second pure like Kirchhoff stress tensor and the green strain tensor are energy conjugates. The previous equations should not overwhelm the student. They are natural extensions to the very simple formulas to calculate the energy per unit volume of a specimen under uniaxial load. The energy is equal to the force multiplied by the incremental uh, displacement divided by the current area and the current length. This gives the increment in the energy per unit uh, uh, volume in the deformed configuration. This is equivalent to multiplying sigma true by the increment in the true strain. This first relationship is equivalent to the first relationship obtained where the Cauchy stress matrix is multiplied by the stress uh, stretch tensor T D to find the energy per unit deformed configuration. The second uh, relationship here shows the energy divided by the original length and the original area. P over A naught and the uh, is equivalent to or analogous to the first piola Kirchhoff stress tensor and the infinitesimal delta over L naught can be viewed analogously to the gradient of displacement U. While no, not, not shown earlier, it can also be shown that P and the gradient of U are energy conjugates.